I've been getting a lot of these uh, uh, racist black people coming along and they're trying to say that they're the true Jews and everything else. And uh, I'm uh, of Esau or Edom or some kind of thing. I'm a cursed white man and all this other stuff. I mean, it's, it's, if I said it to them, it'd be racism, but them saying it to me, it's not racism somehow or whatever. A bunch of stinking hypocrites. But they say Jesus was a black man. We know for sure that Jesus was a black man. We reject the Roman Catholic Jesus. I do too. Uh, Jesus was a Jew, uh, like the people over there in Israel right now, you know. Um, but, we, oh, no, he was that's white people. See, they're racist, you know, totally racist. And the scripture that they use is in Revelation chapter 1. And they say it proves beyond a shadow of a doubt that Jesus is a black man. So we're going to look at the verse here. The verse is, and uh, just show you, see, let me just explain something here very quickly. If you want to go over to, to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, this is an important thing for you to understand. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, uh, verse 14, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. You can't understand this book until you're saved. That's why lost people are coming to this book. They'll make a mess of the, of the Bible. They'll just... Horrible. Terrible. And so you have these people that are into this racist black movement that they're the true Jews. They're not saved. And you look into what they teach and preach for salvation, it's all works-based salvation. You know, you need to just continually live a life of repentance where there's no faith in Jesus Christ involved. Repentance should bring you to the point of salvation. And say, okay, I understand that I'm a sinner. That's what repentance is. It doesn't mean that you clean your life up and then later on you get granted repentance. That's Lordship Salvation. All right. It's just incredible. But these people, you have to continually do works and stuff. Oh, like die in a state of grace, you know. Go to confession, mass, the whole thing. You know, Catholic. Crazy. But let's, look, let's actually look at the verses, because this gets just, I see it in the comments all the time with these people. You know, we're the true Jews, man, we're the true Jews. You know, and, and, and I, I love my black sisters and brothers in Christ out there, okay? I don't have a thing in the world against you. You know, you get irritated at this stuff, just like I get irritated at the white racists, you know, like Stephen Anderson and those cult members, that synagogue of Satan, that arm of it, you know, that think that they're the true Jews. Okay, the true Jews are in Israel. They've been brought back in unbelief. Scripture is being fulfilled. It's crazy. Well, let's look at the verses here. Revelation chapter 1, verse 13. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. And his head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. Now, let me stop right there. Here's the first one. They'll go... See, his head and his hairs were white like wool. See, white wool is like kinky hair, like what a lot of, you know, black people have. That's their, what they're saying. I'm not trying to be, pick on anybody. You know, so that proves that he was a black man. Uh, no, it doesn't. It doesn't say that it was white wool. It's white like wool. And uh, as white as snow. So his hair was snow. No, it's just saying the collar. John is calling, saying the collar white is what his hair was. And, you know, another thing I need to just comment on here, um, this is the resurrected Christ, the resurrected and glorified Jesus Christ in heaven. This isn't what Jesus looked like when he was walking around on the earth. He was 33 and a half years old when he was crucified. He didn't have pure white hair. Okay? Resurrected, glorified Jesus Christ that we're seeing here. But, so they'll use that. So that one, forget that one. Uh, his hair was white. You can't use the thing of the wool to try to say it was kinky like a black person's hair or something like this, like dreadlocks or something. No, that doesn't work. Verse 15. Here's the fun one. And his feet, uh, like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice is the sound of many waters. See? Burned brass. That's brown. <laughs> uh, no, actually, read. Okay, I know. For those out there, the black Hebrew Israelite movement, you're lost. You're headed to hell. You have no idea how to discern things spiritually. But just 
Try to open your mind for a minute here. It doesn't say burned brass. His feet like unto fine brass. Fine brass is polished. It's golden. Not brown. It's golden. As if they burned in a furnace. I used to have a little small little furnace with a little crucible in it and everything else to burn down uh, metals and things like that. I, I was kind of interested in that for a little while, uh, melting down copper and melting down brass and things like that. And I remember the one time I took a whole bunch of brass shell casings from different firearms and things and I wanted to make this little brass bar. And I put them in there and stuff, got the temperature up and everything else and put them in there and it started to melt them down. And uh, I made a little brass bar. I'm not even sure where it's at right now, but you know, about a maybe half a pound or something brass bar. And you know what? When that metal reached a melting point, it was very, very bright to look at. And if you go to a foundry where they actually melt brass, you know, a furnace where brass is melted, they actually will wear protective lenses. I'll put up some pictures here. Molten metal is bright extremely bright to the point where you have to put special protective lenses on your eyes to avoid going going blind okay um it wasn't brown <laughs> right when when john sees his feet they're not brown they're glowing very very white bright light where he's going like this how do you know well, here's uh, something that you can try sometimes. It's called keep reading. It's a new concept I know to some people. Verse 16. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance, what he looks like in other words, was as the sun shineth in his strength. Hmm. That uh, racist... Black Christ that these Hebrew Israelite, black Hebrew Israelite guys come out with. I hate to even call them Hebrew Israelites because they're not. But, you know, these, these racist blacks, they come out with this thing. They have the picture of this Jesus guy. And, you know, um, his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. Bright sunny day. You want to see what the Lord looks like? What we're going to see when we get up there with the rapture? When we see him? Uh, walk out and look up at the sun for a little bit. See how that works out. Um, it's not black. I'll show you some more scriptures. Acts chapter 26. Acts chapter 26. We'll start in uh, verse 13. Acts 26, verse 13. At midday, O king, I saw on the way a light from heaven above the brightness of the sun. Hmm. What did we just read here in Revelation 1? His countenance was more than the brightness of the sun, basically. Above the brightness of the sun, shining round about me, and them which journeyed with me. And when we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me and saying, In the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And I said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. But rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose. He appeared unto Paul. Saul, at the time, was what he was called there. He appears unto him, and it's a bright light, brighter than the sun. It wasn't a black man that showed up in the way and said, Hey, Paul, how you doing? Uh-uh. Bright light, brighter than the sun. They all fell to the ground. They're going like this. I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness both of these things which thou hast seen and of those things in the which I will appear, appear unto thee. What happened to Paul after that encounter? He was blind for a few days. I wonder why that would be. Um, possibly because he looked at a very, very, very bright light. How do you get blind from looking at a black man? 
you racist bigots out there. You say, well, then you believe in the, in the, you can go back to Revelation 21, by the way. Well, you, you believe in the Catholic Christ and with the blonde hair, get blue eyed guy, the little sissy that's knocking at the door. No, I don't believe in him either. That's a, another fake one. That's the white racists that are trying to take Jesus away from the Jews. Then you have the black racists that are trying to take Jesus away from the Jews. Both are wrong. Both are the synagogue of Satan. Revelation chapter 21, we'll look at the verse 23. It says here, And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. Hmm. Again, he's a black man walking around. How are you going to get light out of him? He's a white man walking around, blonde hair. How are you going to get light out of him? You see, what does the Bible teach? Men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. Jesus said, I'm the light of the world. Hmm. And that's no reference to your collar, your collar of his skin or anything else. It doesn't mean, well, he was as white as white could be. No, he wasn't. He was a Jew. Jesus Christ was Jewish. He was not a black man. And he was not a white man. He was not a white Irish Roman Catholic with blonde hair and blue eyes or something. And he was not a black man with white you know, hair like wool or something like that. If you're in this movement, you've been lied to. You've been deceived. You've been tricked. How do you know? Because they're not preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. The blood atonement. They don't teach it. It's works-based salvation. And you look at these leaders. I'll put a little image or two up here. These people, this black Israelite movement and stuff like this, stand there just prideful, arrogant, proud, proud look. You know, the Lord doesn't, isn't for that. It's an abomination in God's sight. As a matter of fact, it's something that He hates. But you know, you know better than me because you're a, you're a true Jew. Right? I mean, I, just, I see this thing all the time in the comments. It's just, it's absolutely absurd. You know, this, this whole thing. Oh, we're the true Jews. We're the true Jews. You know? Well, if you're the true Jews, if, number one, let me ask you a question. Um... Are you sacrificing animals? They did in the Old Testament. Do you have a holy temple where you can sacrifice those animals with the Ark of the Covenant and the Holy of Holies and everything else? They did in the Old Testament. Oh, well, we're raising money to get up to the... Uh-huh, sure you are. Yeah, right. But here's another thing. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 16 through 19 these six, six things doth the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto him. A proud look. We're the kings of Israel. Looking down on the white man. We're the true Jews. We're American patriots. We're the white races of Europe. Those Jews over in Israel are Zionist scum that they are. Proud look. A lying tongue. Hmm. <laughs> a little bit of lying there in the whole Hebrew Israelite, uh, false Hebrew Israelite movement. They're liars. And hands that shed innocent blood. Given enough time, there are race wars coming. They will be shedding innocent blood. And heart that deviseth wicked imaginations. Coming up with all this ridiculous nonsense. Feet that be swift in running to mischief. Again. A false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren. You get these black fake Jews coming along, and they tell the, some say black man or woman, and they say, hey, you're a true Jew. You need to get away from this whole Christian stuff. That's an that's abomination to stench in the, in the nostrils of the Most High God. Well, Jesus died for my sins. Oh, you've been, you, you've been deceived. You've been this and that. You've got to get back under the law. You've got to continue to, to live in this life of repentance where you just continually are, are just confessing your, your sins to God and you're just continually cleaning up your life and everything else. You see? They sow discord. Again, you know, what hope do I have in the 
black Hebrew Israelite movement. I'm a cursed, I'm a cursed race, according to them. Hmm, interesting. When we have uh, Galatians chapter 3, Galatians chapter 3, verse 28. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. Oh, we were slaves. We were treated as slaves. Okay. Get saved. And then you become one. You become my equal. I'm saved. I'm born again. Are you black? You're my equal when you're saved. I'm not, a, I'm not superior to you. You're not inferior to me. You're my brother and sister in Christ. How does your system, though, if you're one of these black Hebrew Israelite people, how does your system Line up with Galatians chapter 3, verse 28. You are superior to others. There is neither male nor female, female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. We're born in by a spirit of adoption. So, you know, I could go off and do a huge big study on this whole thing and just, just pick the whole thing apart. I saw one and another one. These morons are trying to say that King James was actually a black man. I'm just like, oh, brother. Yeah, there were, there were lots of black kings around, you know, Europe and things like this. And I mean, these people are just trying to rewrite history. Brethren, I want you to understand something. i got to just say this. We are literally at the point in time right now, at the end of the church age, right before the rapture happens, the Lord's about done with the Gentiles, okay? <laughs> Until the fullness of the Gentiles become in. God's putting up with a whole bunch of stuff because He's long-suffering, He's patient. But it's going to end soon. You know, He's about done with this whole thing. But we are literally at the point where people can come up with anything anymore. They will literally just lie about stuff and you just go, huh? It's the truth. I've done the research. I've done the, you know, I've experienced it and whatever else. And if you're saved... There's going to be times when you're going to be deceived by some of these people. You're going to start going, well, I don't, I never heard of, oh yeah, it's true, it's true, it's true, you know. And they'll get you so twisted around sometimes and confused. That's why we need to rely on the Holy Spirit to bear witness of the truth. And this King James Bible right here, that you can look and you can go, wait a second here. But that contradicts other scriptures. What you're saying, what you're telling me there, that the Jews are actually black people and they live in America and whatever else. But the Bible says in, in Ezekiel chapter, you know, 28, I think it is. Ezekiel, let me just get the passage here. I want to make sure I have it right. Is it 28 or 38? 28 is the... Uh, yeah. Yeah. 36. <laughs> All right. Sorry about that. My brain's just off in some other thing right now. Ezekiel chapter 36 says that the Lord's going to bring back Israel in unbelief. So wait a second, though. They're brought back to their land. Where's their land? I asked one of these one time. He said, he said, well, Jerusalem doesn't mean Jerusalem, the current city. That's a false city over there. That's, that's not the real city of Jerusalem. The real city's in East Africa. Okay, chapter and verse. Show me some scripture for it. Not on your life. They're not sacrificing animals. They're not going back to their land. They're not preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. They're fake. And they have to twist Revelation chapter 1, the verses talking about Jesus Christ, and leave out the entire thing there where his countenance is like above the brightness of the sun. Pure white light. When you see him, you're going to be going like this. Why did John fall on his feet? Or, you know, fall at his feet, excuse me. Why did John fall at his feet? Why did he fall down? And he's afraid. John, the beloved disciple that's leaning on Jesus' breast at the Last Supper, why does he hit the ground? Because of a very, very bright light. That's why Paul went blind for a few days. Do not be deceived. There are many, many liars out there. False prophets, false ministries. 
Let the Word of God be your standard in all things. That's going to be it. Thank you for watching.